the first time that I was like, raw. Like there's a whole new wave of people now yeah. that have grown up seeing us or hearing us. And they're, they're going, like five years ago to, to you and me, it's not, it's not that, big, that, that big a deal. But if you're, if you're 20, yeah. you were 15 five years ago. That's a massive jump in your progression in, in your life, right? So even if it's like six, seven years, they go, oh, I used to listen to you when I was on my way to school with my mum in the car. And I'm like, bro, bro, you got a bigger beard than me. You're taller than me. You're more wham than me. And you used to listen to me on your way to school. Like, Hello and welcome to Grind, Hustle, Repeat, Conversations Around Creativity and Culture. I'm your host, Ni Odate Evans, and this is the show where we talk to creative entrepreneurs and discuss the ups and downs of their creative journeys, and hopefully by sharing, it provides guidance for others. Now, my guest today is actually one of my inner circle. We met back in 1998 whilst navigating life at Luton University. And since leaving Luton, he's gone on to have a successful radio and television career. Now in 2007, along with another one of our close friends, Melvin and Doom, they were signed to the Kiss FM Breakfast Show, where they were later joined by Charlie Hedges. And they sat at the helm of the award-winning show for about 13 years. And then they switched and moved to BBC Radio One, where you will now find them Monday to Thursday from 8 p.m. My guest today, on Grind, Hustle, Repeat is my guy, radio and DJ and television presenter, Ricky Haywood Williams. My bro. Yo, 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 yo. What's on him, brother? Yes, King. What's you know going? what? You know what? Legit, yeah, it's actually good to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you too, bro. It's, bro it, every well, time I see you, you got more grey though. What's going on? Man's got the even, pepper ting. You got the salt pepper ting down, bro. I can't even control it. Professor out here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the mad thing is? I saw a picture the other day, probably circa 2013, 2014. And I had maybe like a wisp or so. And obviously I, the head was shaved anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you just feel like, oh, I actually feel like I've just been robbed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Because uh, there's certain man. Like when I, I'm, I'm getting grey, bro. I'm getting grey. Like I'm getting, I'm starting to get grey. I didn't realize that I was getting greys because obviously I, I normally keep my hair quite short. Like the sides are normally like short, fade or whatever. But during the first lockdown, obviously everyone had to grow their hair, in it. So I didn't clock this until I was getting my hair cut for the first time after lockdown, and my barber was kind of like doing like a, a 360 kind of view. And he was like, right, let's do one now when you're with your hair. Yeah. And then, yeah will cut to when your hair's cut. Yeah. While he was like sp sp spinning me around and he sent it to me, I was like, I was like, what's the, what's the, is the lighting funny in there? I was like, what's the, where's the sunshine? There ain't no sunshine coming through. Like, there ain't no windows in there. Bro, there was bare greys around the back, like little like that patch there, patch over there. But obviously I don't see it because yeah. I keep my hair short. Yeah. But trust me, they are there. It's, it's weird. weird. You know the funny thing is when I, so at first, I think it was like this side. That was the first bit of grey that started coming. I didn't yeah. mind that so much. It was just that little bit there. Yeah. You look, looked a little bit distinguished, you know what I mean? Like them ones there, head was ball off, so it didn't really matter. Then when I just started letting my hair grow back, same with you. And I'm like, what? Pink, 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 pink. I was like, what's going on? Like, but it's, it, it just, I mean, to be honest with you, now I'm like, it's cool, isn't it? Like, it suits you. You're all right. You're all right because it suits you. And well, you can do the you can do the nappy dread, and you can do the the, the you can peel it off as well. So you know you're good the, to go. You know what the funniest thing about the hair is? I upset some people with the, with my hair. You know, what? like uh, Josiah was one of them. Um, one of my other friends, Jordan, because a lot of these people thought I had gone bald. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like, oh. Knees in the same club as us. <laughs> yeah. Before you were doing a Melbourne Listen, dude. <laughs> Josiah, Josiah sent me hate mail, man. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah sent me hate mail, but yeah, mm. no, it's 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 been it's been weird because really that like, the last time that I've had hair like this really was back in uni when yeah. I was really rocking the curls and stuff like that. 
But I actually enjoy having hair again, sort of thing. It's nice. I don't know how long it will last, but it's it suits it's, you. Yeah. It suits you. I Thank tell you, I, I would, I'd, I'd say nothing in it if it, if it didn't suit you. Like, <laughs> say nothing in it. Say nothing. Say nothing. Everyone's there, just like <laughs> can't see it. We, oh, never noticed, bro. Never noticed. Never noticed. <laughs> so listen, yeah. Obviously, this year has been like no other, all right? And um, Christmas is is around the corner. Yeah. How do you? How different do you think it's going to be from from last year? Like your Christmas last year to your Christmas this year, but then also taking into account everything that you, I guess, learned, experienced over this year. How do you think Christmas is going to be different for you this year? All right, man. Where do I start? Where do I start? So. Because we haven't really caught up in a minute. There's been a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that has happened. Wow. And when I'd say that the start of the year, you know, it was like, this, it was the same as any old year, to be fair. Um, the only difference being it was like our, our first kind of full cycle at Radio One. So we were going into like our second year of, of being at Radio One. That was the only difference. Um, but apart from that, you know, things were the same. S- was still a single guy. Lola was cool, like my daughter. Parents were all in the same sort of place. The landscape was the same, right? right? Now, fast forward to maybe February, and my dad started to become ill. Okay. Uh, it became more apparent that he was he was unwell. Mm-hmm. So we knew that we knew that he had some kind of issue with his mind and his memory. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'd been aware of that for about a year. Okay. We'd all been monitoring him. Um, he had to stop working. He basically had to retire. Um, you know, my mum was like looking out for him and kind of like, kind of like helping him with, with like his living situation because he got into a bit of like of, uh, situations where we didn't realise at the time because of his, we didn't understand his, his condition, yeah. but he was getting into like, you know, like, like arrears with things and we're like, but dad, like, you did a job the other day, like how come you didn't pay the guy or whatever? So there was a lot of things that were happening in the, in the lead up to the, the start of this year. Mm-hmm. And it all just exploded when COVID kicked in. Right. So COVID kicked in and my dad uh, is living in his apartment and obviously he was classed as one of the, the vulnerables, oh, right? No. At the time. So I'd go around there like once a week and kind of like, you know, just, you know, give him his shopping and whatnot. And I'm like, dad, do you, are you sure you're getting out? Don't be sitting up in your in your apartment all day every day. You need to get out. You're allowed to go out, but where his mind wasn't right, he was just like not getting out enough. He wasn't like taking his time to go like for a walk around the park or whatever. Anyway, cutting a very very long story short, my dad ended up in hospital. He was diagnosed with vascular dementia, um, and we found out that after a long string of lots of events that you know I won't I won't bore you with, but he needed 24 hour care. So he had to go into a care home. So then there was a long process of trying to find the right sort of care home for him. And care homes ain't cheap. <laughs> care homes are not cheap, bro. Yeah, so yeah. It was, a, a, and with my family being the way that it is in terms of its size and yeah. all of the different personalities, everybody had an opinion. <laughs> um, and everyone, is, you, you know my brother Lewis, you know my brother yeah. Robert. Robert's quite similar like me. He's quite chill. But Lewis is very opinionated and very forthcoming with his views. And his view is normally the opposite to everybody else's. So <laughs> there's a, there a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, we managed to get him into a care home, a really good care home. Um, and he's doing well. He's doing well. So that was that was that's that was the first thing. That's massive. Um, yeah, really good. That's really life changing. Yeah, bro, man, that's a lot, tough, bro. I can't lie; it was it was really tough. I've, I've I've skirted over a lot of stuff. I can imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of things that happened. There was a lot of incidents that went down, and it was stressful. And it was all happening during lockdown, and I was still having to homeschool Lola. I was still having to go to work because when lockdown kicked in, I, um. Rightly, a lot of people were unsure, a lot of people were scared, a lot of people didn't know what was going on. Um, and randomly enough, I think, I'm sure you've probably heard this narrative quite a lot, I think I've actually had it. I think I actually had yeah, yeah, COVID yeah. before it was kind of common knowledge that this was a thing. 
when I think back to the top of the year, I think I had it around February because I was off work. Mm. I was really ill. I had this weird kind of like chesty, fluidy cough. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Like proper, proper like fluid on my lungs. I could proper, I'd never had anything like that before. And I was taken out for about three, four days. Right. So when uh, COVID kicked in, I said to myself, do you know what? I understand that, you know, like my work colleagues are going to be a bit dodgy, like, you know, wary about stuff. I was like, I'll, I'll still come into work. I don't mind. If it helps you guys, I'll come into work. You can work from home. It's cool. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So I was doing that. So I was still going into work, which in fairness actually helped me because it kept some normality in my life. Yeah. Even yeah. though, you know, I was driving to work and it was like, it was like the end of days, bro. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know if you got out. Did you get out during like the early I, days? I, I got out a couple of times and almost intentionally because sometimes when you would go out and you would drive around, that I was intrigued by the eeriness of it all. Of oh. like this, you know, like, look, you know, last year when I was hitting the Uber hard, like I know how it takes, how long it takes to get from one side of London to the other. That's and right. And then right, like just before everything kind of popped, and I did one journey and I'm like, zoom, zoom. That's Ooh. right. That's Whoa. right. Yeah. I'll, it normally takes me on a normal day. If I leave, if we start work at eight, I'll leave, I'll leave home up, say six o'clock to get there for seven. It's an hour before the show. Yeah. I could leave during lockdown 25 minutes <laughs> before my show <laughs> and get there in good time. Right, like yeah. in good time. Yeah. So yeah, it was a madness. So, um, yeah, so obviously, like, I, I was still doing all of that stuff. I was going mm. into work, homeschooling Lola. Um, the situation with my, with my dad happened. And then kind of in the midst of all of that, I met someone on, on, on a dating app. So Melvin, about... <laughs> can I, about can I just jump in for a second, yeah? Go on, go on. You know this dude is upset because he's <laughs> like, he's the only one that hasn't benefited from this app. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the joke, the joke thing is, right, Ross, the joke thing is, we know, we know Melvin. Yeah. He was a late starter, so <laughs> he's making up for lost time. It's true, though, isn't it? It's true. It's the truth. At uni, my man was playing Metal Gear Solid and flipping Mario Kart, like, while we were, like, living life, doing the things that university... We, we opened up his eyes to a whole new world, but none of us had any idea what we were letting loose. Like, and we... <laughs> We should probably take responsibility for some of the carnage. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> Sometimes I look at Melvin and I'm like, bro, I've lived, but you are living. <laughs> you are living. And I, I, I love it. I love it. But I'm yeah, like, yeah. when are you going to slow down? Like, and that's me saying it. That's me saying it, Russ. That's Listen, me saying it. I live vicariously through that guy. Like, there was a period where I would go and see him and I'd be like, so what's the new story? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, yo, I have been out for a decade and over, nearly two decades, bro. Nearly two decades, yeah. So yeah. some of the stuff that I would hear, I'm like, this is so wild. Like beyond my my yeah. But yeah, man, live life in it. But going back to the dating app, yeah. right? Listen, hear the joke. So Melbourne was like, Rick's. Like, I know you're like, you're not really on this thing no more, but like, Hinge is good, you know? He was like, you should go on there. There's a lot of people on there that are like our age. You can like, it's, it's quite good. Go on there, right? So I was like, yeah, Melvin, I'm done with that whole dating app. It's not really my, I'm not really about it. Like, you just get, when you go on them, for people like us who work in the public domain, you spend the majority of your time like trying to prove that you are who you are. You are, yeah. Or people are like, well, why are you on here? Because you meet celebrities all day, every day. And I'm like, well, I don't like try and date celebrities when they come into my workplace. It's not like, I basically work in an office. It's not, yeah. do, you, do you try out with people in your, in your workplace like all day, every day? It's not very professional. Anyway, I digress. So I'm, I, I go on Hinge now. I start to put the feelers out a little bit. And I'm starting to see a, a trend happening, right? Mm -hmm. but you, I see someone that I like, match with them. You start a conversation, two twos now, they're like, oh, you're friends with Melvin. We went on a date the other day. <laughs> Bro, there was, there was one time I made, I don't know why, I don't know why I didn't do my due diligence yeah. 
but I made it onto a date. Onto oh. A, I've just bought the first round of drinks. Because I want my I, money back. <laughs> <laughs> because a, a part of me as well, I don't like, I didn't, I didn't like the whole, I don't like going on to something like that and being like, yeah, this is what I do. Da, 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 da. I try and keep it as normal as possible. Mm. One, so they don't think you're showing off. Not that there's anything to show off about. But mm. One, so they don't, they don't think you're really big time or whatever. But two, when you meet them, you've got something to talk about, right? Rather than getting it all out in the open yeah, beforehand. Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You can't do that when you got a bread you like Mel. You can't, you can't. So I met this girl. You do your due diligence. You have to do your due diligence, bro. So I've got on this date now. I've literally just bought the first round of drinks. And I can't remember how the conversation went. But something was mentioned about a radio show or whatever, about being on the radio. And she was like, what? Are you on Radio 1? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And she was like, oh. And I was like, why? She's like, oh, um, like, do you, who do you do a show with? And I was like, like me, like my bridging Melv and Charlie. And she's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, this oh, summer, ma, this <laughs> summer, <ma." laughs> So after, so we laughed about it and we joked about it, you know, we drank up. Yeah. Had, we, we spoke, it was cool. Yeah. And we went about our business, right? So then I'm like, it's, this ain't really for me, man. It's not really for me. Like, I, I leave it to, like, like, Melvin's hungrier than me. Like, I leave it to, that's his domain. I leave, it, I leave that to him. Literally, as I was about to lock off this, in fact, I did try and lock off the app. But for some reason, it didn't delete off of my phone. I think I, I must have just logged out of it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something happened and I didn't log out of it completely. So I'm swiping through my phone one day and I'm like, well, I thought I deleted this thing. Like, am I still getting charged? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so I've, ser I've searched it up now. And it's rebooted. And I've looked in like my inbox and there's a message from like, a couple of people. Um, and one of the messages was from this girl called Natalie. So I was like, oh. so I messaged her back. Within about, I'd say within about two messages, this girl sent me a number. She's like, um, let's talk. And it, it was like maybe four or five days later when I replied. And then she was like, look, you're, you seem like you're long on this app. Here's my number, message me type thing, right? So we then spoke, and no word of a lie, we just connected. Like, we just, just connected. It was weird. Like, I always hear people say, people that have been in relationships like yourself, mm. and Nana, or whoever it might be, my elders, my aunties, uncles, and they're like, when you meet someone, when you meet the right person, you will know, and it will just mm. feel right. And I've always been like, nah, man, it's, that's not how it's going to happen. It's going to be a conscious decision to, to go there. What are you going to say? You, I don't know if you remember this year. Years ago, one time, me and you, we, we met up in a bar just off Liverpool Street somewhere. And we were catching up and we were chatting. Um, and then we were talking about, like, when you know um, it's over with somebody. And then right. you, gave me, you gave me a litmus test that I, I use to this day, right? Really? Yes. So you were like, I always imagine if I go out somewhere and I see my girl like with another person, yeah. how would that make me feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then if I'm like, then I'm, yeah. you know what I mean? It, or if I don't care, then, then I know. And in, you know, people talk about Nana and I, da, 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 we have our ups and downs and whatnot have you, but like in the times when you're uncertain, which to be honest, haven't been that many, but in those times when I've been uncertain, I have that image of her with, and it's always a dude taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I still get that sinking feeling. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm in it, I'm in it. So yeah, yeah, but I digress, I digress. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, like, we just, we, we just connected. You clicked. You clicked. I, I, I was what, 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 was there just something or just everything? Like, first and foremost, we've both got daughters. Right. They're, they're the same age, they're only six months apart. Okay. So we, we connected on that level straight away. So we've got, we've got, uh, like a common ground straight away, yeah. common, a common ground straight away. We've both been in previous relationships. We've both got like a child from a previous relationship. So we connected on that level. But for me, what I have been looking for like in the last few years is you, you can meet people like 10 a penny, but when you meet someone who stimulates your brain rather than like anything else, because I get, I get bored so easily. You're a Gemini as well, Russell. I'm sure you're the same, that you're, 
your attention span can go because we're constantly thinking about stuff where we I'm an overthinker. I'm, I'm thinking about every different scenario. I'm thinking about all different. I'm always thinking. Yeah. So if I meet someone and they're not holding my attention, I get bored it's right. quite easily. It's and it's, I, I might like them. They might be a lovely person, but if they can't hold my, my attention, if they can't hold me mentally, then I, it's, it's, there's no point. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, she just held me mentally. Like she's very, very, she's very intelligent but without being like, kind of, you know, like, it, it's not, you don't feel inferior. Yeah, but yeah, you know yeah. that, you, I know that I could put her in pretty much any scenario and she'll be cool. Yeah. Whether it's like chilling out socially, whether it's I've got to go to a dinner and I've got to be around people that are a bit more highbrow, whether it's around my grandmother, whether it's whoever, whoever it is, I know that she- She knows she how can, to act and she can- She knows how to act, bro. And she into can yeah, yeah, and yeah, she's cool, she's cool, yeah. she's cool. And then, yeah, we spoke, we spoke, we spoke, we spoke a lot, obviously. And I always say this to her, she doesn't like it. I always say to her, if it wasn't for lockdown, I, prob I probably wouldn't have entertained it. Like, I'm like, honestly, mm. I know it sounds harsh, but just because of life, yeah. work, you know, running around, doing whatever, I probably just wouldn't have given it the time of day that I did because we were all in that weird yeah. landscape where we were all just at home. We were all just at home, bro. Like we were in our yards 24 seven. It was mad. It was, it was crazy. It was great because we had that kind of, that, that kind of like that build up, that build up like leading up to first meeting. They gave, the government gives you the, the opportunity to be in a bubble with someone. So we mm. were like, so we <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Lola and Dusty met, they got on really well. Like it just, it just, everything just clicked. It just clicked. And yeah, she, she met. Uh, the, the ultimate test is mum and my gran. And my gran was like, please marry this girl before I die, right? This is like, bro, bro. Hey, granny put it bro. on you, bro. bro. She put it on you. She put it on me. My mum, my mum resisted. So when, okay. when my mum found when my mum found out about her, she took us I could she didn't say anything, but I could see that she took a like a mental step back. Yeah. And she was like quite resistant. And I didn't want to force it upon her. I didn't want to like be come over, come and meet. I was like, Nat's gonna be over if you're passing. Like I wasn't like I didn't force it on her, sort of thing. Yeah. And then um yeah, they met through chance at my house. Like they just both happened to be passing it. Mum came over unannounced. Natalie was going to be passing through. Lola was here. And she came over and obviously Lola and Nat and Dusty. Dusty wasn't, wasn't there at the time. But um, we'd spent a lot of time together at this point. So their relationship is, is really nice. Yeah, yeah. So I could see Mum looking at how Nat was with, with Lola. And I could, see, I could see her brain just going, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. And she could see that it was just genuine yeah. and that there was love there. And then from that moment, yeah. That all, Natalie and my mum talk more than my mum talks to me, bro. Like, they <laughs> chat. You'll be telling me stuff about, like, my mum. And I'm like, what? When? Yeah. Where? How? What? Like, they're like, it's weird. It's weird. It's funny. I have that with Nana's dad. Nana's really? dad calls me more than he calls her. Like, he called me earlier on today. I was just on a call. Like, but he, you know what it is? Is like I was, I was on a call and I saw him calling, and I'm like, I can't answer that because it's never, it's never a quick thing. Yeah. Like it's never a quick thing. He yeah, will yeah, go yeah. in. He'll be yeah. like, and before I know it, he's telling me about that time he was in Ghana and there was a coup. <laughs> <and> this, <laughs> I mean, it's like he goes in. But you know what's mad is like, just listening to everything you, you said, but just like watching you talk about her and the situation. I'm not going to lie. So when, when I've said, how's your year been? And you started off with your dad, I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, I hope I'm not going to start bloody shedding tears yeah, right yeah. now. Um, and then to moving on to talking about Natalie and just seeing your face, like your watch is back and you, and yeah. it, you could just see the joy. And so I'm looking forward to, to meeting her. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to same that I've said with everyone, just meet her. That's, yeah. that's all I need to do. Just, just meet her. 
I'm not going to big her up. I'm not going like, to say this, that anymore. Just meet her. You were, you were saying about how, like, when she, you know, coming around people and it just clicked. And it reminded me of, it's, I feel bad because I feel like we're throwing Melvin under the bus here, yeah? <laughs> but there was throw one it, time. Throw it, throw it. <laughs> That's why it's bulletproof. He dusts himself up and goes, yeah. Let's go. So there was one time we're at the house. So me and Nana are there. Yona's there. Um, and there's some, some other people there as well, right? And this young lady comes in. And you could just, I think, I don't know whether she didn't know that there were going to be people in the house or what, but she just walked in, saw everybody, and you could see immediately she was uncomfortable, right? So I was standing, like, by the, 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 the kitchen bar thing, island. Yeah. And she came in, and she looked at me, and I said, hey, how you doing? You okay? And then she looked up, and she goes, I'll have a glass of water, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the barman, yeah? You're Melvin's barman. <laughs> Bro, listen, the room went quiet, yeah? <laughs> and I remember Nana saying afterwards, she was thinking, of all the people that this girl could have said that to, why did she say it to you, yeah? <laughs> And I could see Yona's face. Yona was like, oh. <laughs> and then Yona jumped in and she was like, that's okay, I'll get you a glass of water. And then she got the water and da da da. And I'm just there like, God bless Yona. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Yona saw what time it was, man. She saw, she saw what time. Because you know when you're like really processing, like, <laughs> yo, like, I know I speak good English, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know I speak good English and so yeah but it was you could just see she was for whatever reason I don't know she was just really uncomfortable in that situation so those things are important when you when you're putting somebody in a new situation yeah just like because it's, it's your people in it it's your yeah. people and not to say that it can't work but then it, it you're telling yourself all right so a dynamic is going to change because yeah. if I want to be with this person and they're not comfortable here, then that dynamic is going to change. And it's whether you're you yeah. know, willing to do that. So, yeah, so your, your Christmas is going to be different this year then, bro. It's going to be different, bro. It's going to be, it's going to be different. <laughs> but, um, yeah, mum always spent like, no matter what the dynamic is, whether it's my brother comes over or the brothers come over or whatever the dynamic is, mum's always with me. Like, mum's yeah. always with me. And she made it quite clear that that is not going to change. <laughs> but because of the way Nat is anyway, mm -hmm. she's like, I would never like try and yeah. stop that from happening. And her, her family are from Cornwall anyway. Okay. So she, she's up here kind of like with no family anyway. So mm -hmm. she was like, I, I, I like to be around people. She's like, I don't really get a chance to because all my family are in Cornwall yeah. and her daughter Dusty, um, spends time with her dad over Christmas as well. So she can't leave because it's only like, you know, it's like a couple of days, it's not work. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's yeah. like, to be around family is, is would be great. So yeah. she's she's well up for it. So that's cool. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's new territory, bro. It's new it's territory. New territory. How does it feel like you're out the game? Bro, do you know what? If I'm honest, bro, I've I've wanted to be without without I I knew I did. But I hadn't spoke it into existence. I'd always be like, I'd, I'd always be like, people have asked me, and I'd be like, yeah, 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 you know, like, I'm, I'm open to it. But really, I hadn't really opened the door. I'd be yeah. saying it, but I wasn't really, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. And when we met, because of the way that she is, she, she's like, she, she's the sort, the sort of, she's the type of character that I needed for me to go, all right, let me, I need to pay attention here to yeah. what the universe, what God, whoever is telling me, open your eyes, bro. Yeah. Like, this is it. Because normally I might dismiss it or, because I've been in situations before, like I've said to Nat, I've been in situations before where, you know, people have been, Ricky, I like you. Like, I, I would love to spend my life with you. Yeah. Like, what are you saying? And I'm like, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. And, the way that Nat is, she's like, no, 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 let's not see, let's do. Yeah. She's like, let's do. Like, what I are like, you waiting for? I like for? her already, man. She, bro, she got me this, like, this plaque, this piece of artwork. Because I said to her one day, she was like, so what, 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 how do you see this going? And I was like, you know, like, whatever will be, will be. 
And she was like, she, she got me this plaque and it says, whatever will be, will be, but sometimes you have to make things happen. And she gave that to me for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, like, you know, one of the things that, and you know, this is, this is what happens over time. One of the things that Nana pointed out to me that I, that I do, that I, I try to not to do, but I do, is like you, being non-committal to things. Like the idea, so even being together as long as we have, her asking me something, are we going to do this or are we going to do that? And then the worst thing I can say to her is, I, I will see. <laughs> we'll see. Bro, that's my favorite phrase. <laughs> <laughs> That is my default phrase, bro. Listen, the way the way I would I would draw <laughs> over the last twenty years, the way I have drawn for that response to so many things, like it's just it's like water. But then you it's know, because we like a, we we like we like a quiet life, and and that covers the quiet life because it means that yeah, if we get there and it can happen, it will happen. If it can't happen, no one's upset, no yeah. one's disappointed. It covers That's all bases. It covers all bases. You're making me go back to my... <laughs> it makes sense, though. It makes sense. But you know, you know what made me perk up was Akai. Jaja, Jaja is, is the opposite. Jaja will say what he wants. Yeah. Right, right, right. Akai, so seeing, when you see your bad traits in your children, yeah. it hurts so much. Yes. So yes. He, he does a thing of where he's like, I don't know. So it's like a simple question. Yeah. What do you want to eat? I don't know. And you're like, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> like, no, no, you're, no. you're literally presenting him with like burger, pizza. I don't know. Yeah. And then it's when they also then shine the light back on you, like, but you do it. And you're like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah, but yeah. it's so, like, that's, that's one of the things that I will always say that I've learned from being in a relationship with Nana is like the importance of, of also not being afraid to say no. Cause a lot of the time when I say, we'll see, it's actually a no. I don't wanna, I don't wanna upset you by saying no. Right. And, and I have as, as loud and as boisterous as I can be, I don't like confrontation. Yeah, so, uh, bro, you're we're the same. We're the same. Twenty four hours apart. Twenty four. Third and the fourth. Third and the fourth. Third and the fourth. I don't like confrontation. Same. So in my mind, by saying we'll see, it's safe. Yeah, I avoid confrontation. But actually, me saying no doesn't have to be confrontation, and yeah. it's taken me a while to learn that sort of yeah. thing. And and yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't even say I'm perfect now, but it's it's. I'm definitely way more aware of it so you know it's been an interesting 20 years <laughs> <laughs> but you're still here you're yeah, still here yeah, you yeah, put yeah, us yeah. to shame you lot have put us all to shame it's all it's, to shame. it's yeah it's been interesting it's been, been interesting but talking talking about the last 20 years yeah yeah so i feel like essentially you you guys have been at the at, at the helm of popular culture like and you've seen it change yeah you know so what do you think have been the biggest changes like and and for for good and for bad yeah good question like personally or generally both <laughs> but from a personal point of view yeah. so i'll give you a story so we went oh i took my um i've got a cousin who's like about 10 years younger than me, his name's, his name's Joshua. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a rapper, mm -hmm. he's by the name of Joe Joey, right? Good, good rapper. He used to hang around with Stormzy, he used to like, he's, he's from that, that wave. So yep. really, he's, he's trying to make it in the world. He's, you know, he puts out video after video. His work ethic is phenomenal, right? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, he's just not getting to that next level. Yeah. Just, just that, that one next step, he'd blow. But he's just, he gets views upon views upon views on his videos and stuff. I posted them online. I played them on our show. But it's just getting into that next level just seems to be eluding him for whatever the reason. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will happen. But for now, he's, he's just trying to make that next step. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years back, I got invited to the, uh, the GRM 
rated awards. Yeah. Right? So I said, right, I've got two tickets. I was like, Josh, these are all your peers, bro. Like, come through. Let's go. Like, let's go. Like, we'll go. I've never been before. I'd, I'd like to go. Mm-hmm. But this is your time. You can go network and whatever. So we've gone, we've gone down there now. And, you know, this must have been about what? About three, about three years ago, I'd say. So <laughs> in my head, bro, I'm still... Slick Rick, rookie MC. Like, I'm still that guy that we used to like jump on the mic at uni. I'm still him, right? I'm bust down there in my trainers and my leather jacket. I'm still, you know, and I'm getting these guys and these girls coming up to me and they're like, ah, oh, yes, unks. Big up, unks. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Bro, it was daggers to the heart over and over again. Or people are like, oh, you're a legend. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And I'm like, huh? Legend? <laughs> I just you what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Bro, I felt like the poorest version of Trevor Nelson ever. <laughs> like, I felt weak. I felt so wounded. Oh. <clears throat> and that was the first time that I was like, bro, like there's a whole new wave of people now yeah. that have grown up seeing us or hearing us. And they're, they're going, like five years ago to, to you and me, it's not, it's not that, big, that, that big a deal. But if you're, if you're 20, yeah. you were 15 five years ago. That's a massive jump in your progression in, in your life, right? So even if it's like six, seven years, they go, oh, I used to listen to you when I was on my way to school with my mum in the car. And I'm like, bro, bro, you got a bigger beard than me. You're taller than me. You're more wham than me. And you used to listen to me on your way to school. Like, <laughs> it's weird. So then I started to think to myself, do you know what, Rick, you need to reevaluate how you see yourself. And I was like, you're not that guy anymore. You're not that guy. And people don't look at you as that, that way. So you shouldn't look at yourself that way either. Obviously, don't get me wrong. I, I wasn't having like an identity crisis. I was just like, how do I fit in this new world? Yeah. And my thing was, okay, I, would, I want to be, if that's the way that the scene sees us because we've been around for a long time, I want to help to give the same way that I was helping my cousin, taking him to the, the rated awards. I want to help the other youngers coming through and give them a platform. Yeah. And that was kind of like my, uh, kind of like, like the, the, the reasoning behind um, the new show when we joined Radio One. I was like, the bosses were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, for me personally, we've done 11, 12, 13 years of just playing commercial music, like chart music probably 10 tunes over and over again. I want to help artists when they're first starting out. Like, I want to give them like a foot up. I want to be able to, you know, I want them to come to me and be like, oh, do you remember when you gave me my first radio play and da 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 da? I want to do that. And that's what we've been able to do on our show, like on Radio One, and we're doing it on a platform. Because we've done the air miles of, you know, Kiss Breakfast and MTVs and Melvin's done, you know, extra factors and like all the good things that he's done and Charlie's done as well. We, we were able to take that kind of synopsis mm-hmm. and take it to Radio One and go, look, we want to do this on the biggest platform that you can have on yeah. the radio in this country yeah. for this demographic. And it was, it was tricky as well because obviously Radio One isn't, like if you listen to like Radio One from dusk till dawn, it's very, very, it caters for everyone, obviously. Yeah. But our show is more of a window into the One Extra world. It's more of like, like, the way that it was sold to me was, you're a Radio One show, but your playlist is, your playlist is a One Extra playlist. You're, you're highlighting and you're celebrating black music. Yeah. So that was perfect for me. That was perfect for me. And um, it, the, the remix changed slightly. It's become a little bit broader but it still gives us the opportunity to do that, which is amazing. Do you, do you feel like a sense of responsibility? And do you also feel like, does that responsibility perhaps make you want to take this new role that you've given yourself, per se, further out, like extending it through social media or something like that? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, you got the likes of like Julia Denuga out there, like really championing like new artists. Do you, do you see yourself doing something similar or...? No, I don't. And I think <laughs> the reason why the reason why is because there are there are people out there that are 
better at it than us. Okay. So, because we were in the Kiss Breakfast bubble for so long, like the artists, the, the type of artists that I would want to do that for, don't look at us as that vehicle. Yeah, you know? I, I hear that. They'll look towards like a, a snoochie shy or a sad man or a, uh, a young filly or do you know what I mean? And I'm looking at them going, right, okay, you guys, I look at them, like I look at a young filly in chunks and I go, you're so, you're so different to what we were doing, but really it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just 15 years down the line, do you know what I mean? And we were those guys. You, bro, you used to write our scripts, you used to film us, you used to put all of that content together. We'd go in the clubs and we'd muck around and we'd do skits and do this and do that. And if we had, if we had the, uh, the technology that is available now, bro, I reckon we were probably about, about five or six years ahead. Early, too early. Like, Sorry, too early. yeah, 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 yeah. Too early, too early. You know what I'm saying, see what I'm yeah. saying. Because we were doing everything that they were doing, that they're doing now. It's yeah, just yeah. we had to build a website. We had to like learn coding. You had to learn coding. Like, we, it was much more difficult. So it it really was like thinking back to those meant to excel. Sorry, those meant to excel days, where the idea of being in a club with a camera and not just doing a video of people raving. But like you said, scripting shit out, making a show. Like looking back at some of the stuff like the black and white party, um, Excel month, the game show short and curly. And to be honest with you, sometimes I forget about it all, you know, like I'll, I'll be bruised with, um, perusing YouTube or something and it will pop up. I'm like, raw. Short and curly needs to come back. That, that yeah. Yeah, 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 that, that show. I, st I, st I see stuff now and I'm like, we could do that now. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we could easily do that now. Easily. easily. Yeah. I mean, I, you know what? I loved, <clears throat> I loved doing it and I wish that the, um, I think my problem was um, a combination of two things, fear and procrastination. So because, like you said, we were a bit early. Yeah. You know, if you're running out, out, out front, you're on your own, innit? So I'm looking around, I'm like, yeah, nobody's really doing what we're doing, though. So then you begin to doubt yourself and you want the validation from outside. And so when you, you don't have that, then the procrastination kicks in because you're, you're doubting yourself. Like, is this, is this really, can this really go somewhere? And I think one of the things that I love is when you look at the young fillies, the chunks, the, the beta crew and all of them people there, the way that they are so unapologetically we're doing this there's there's room for us there's space for us and even if they don't think that there's space for them they're gonna be like we're gonna make space i don't even think they're thinking there's no space they're just going i'm gonna do my thing <laughs> i'm gonna do yeah. my thing innit? i've got a phone i've got a laptop i've got a mic i'm gonna do my thing and there's thousands upon thousands of other guys going well they're heavy or like because they're, they're not doing anything new they're not doing yeah. anything new no no they're doing it like you say unapologetically which mm -hmm. i love i love like young philly came to our show maybe six months ago and he was like <laughs> he was like i was putting out videos on the internet like just putting out this that and the other he's like i was getting mad likes and then he was like some producers came to me and was like we want to sign you like we want to use you for it might have been bbc3 or whatever whatever it was i'm not too sure but he was approached by it might have been a talent agent mm -hmm. He was approached by someone official and they were like, you've got something. We want to harness you and take you to the next level. And he was like, um, raw, like, okay. Um, and they were like, right, we're going to do like a, a demo with you or whatever. Like a, what, 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 what do we call it? Um, pilot or? Pilot or like a showroom. Showroom, showroom, showroom. showroom with you, right? And he was like, okay, cool. Um, Right, I better go and like look at some other presenters, and they were like, "No, no, 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 no! Don't look at anyone. Don't go and look reference any." They were like, "What you're doing is brilliant. Don't like be influenced by anyone." And he was like, "He was like, raw, okay." And then he went, "But I didn't tell him, but I want to look back at videos of you and Melvin from your earlier career, like." And I was like, "Wow, that's mad!" And he was just like. You guys were the, like my reference point. Like he goes, like when I was thinking, like who who would I look to? He was like, I looked to to you guys because I, I saw you on telly and 
on the radio and da 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 da. And so we were chatting to Sideman the other day because we did like some press day and he was like interviewing and stuff down there, killing it. And he said the same thing. He was like, I used to listen to you like every single day. He was like, there was a screen burn in my TV of ah. the line because I used to listen to you like so much. And that just makes me feel, it's, it's a weird one because part of me is like, I don't believe it. But then we're like, they're, they're telling you with wide eyes and they're like, no, nah, serious thing. And then I'm like, that's mad. Cause you look, I'm looking at you look going, bro, I need, I need to up my game. Cause you yeah. look, you lot don't have any, you, they have no rules. They have no yeah. rules. They're releasing music. They're, every time I think that I, I, I put them into a, into a box, because they, they do that, they do something, they're gamers, they're, they're bloggers, they're, they do like discussions. They, they've got anything they can imagine, they put out there. Whereas I'm, I look at stuff and go, well, I, I'd really like to do that. But I second guess myself and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. should I put that out? Am I going to get looked at in a way? Am I going to get dissed away? They are unapologetic and they put stuff out. And I love that about them. I love that. I, 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 even something just like this, just hitting up people on Zoom and having a chat. Bro, I had to mull this over in my head. Like, you know what I mean? And, and to, to see the, the level of vim that they have, it really is inspiring. But go back in a, a, going back a little bit, you was talking about... Um, looking at them and the, the, the different things that they do and this, that, and the other. Do you feel, so obviously, you, you know, you were talking about the, the Julie route is not for you. Is there still things in your career that you're like, yeah, I want to I wanna hit this, I want to hit that? And yeah, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I think um, me personally, like doing all of the stuff that we do at the minute, because we've, we've, we kind of, I can't speak for Melvin, but I can speak for myself, obviously. In terms of the presenting game, we've done, we've ticked a lot of boxes. We are the first black male duo to have a primetime TV show um, on ITV, 7 p.m., Saturday night. Like, that's Bang mad. on the money. Mad. The show didn't work, didn't work out. Um, but off the back of that show... So many producers, so many like people in the industry were like, do you know what? You, we loved you two. It's yeah. just the show didn't quite work. It was a bit confusing. It didn't, it didn't really work out. My problem with, with that situation is that it feels like a bit like in football where you get like a black, a black manager. They're few and far between. They get a chance. If it doesn't work out, they get the sack. Never see from them ever again. They don't get a chance. But if you get the same character, the same person, and they're white, mm. they'll get a chance, they'll get the sack, they'll get another job, like, the world, yeah. get another job down the line, they'll get, they, they, they get another chance. I remember our producer saying to us, our boss actually, at ITV, Thames, and she was like, Ant and Deck did a good few shows that didn't work, mm. that didn't work, but they were believed in, they had people behind them that believed in them, and they, obviously they're good, they're brilliant at what they do, but they were given the opportunity to, to grow because if like, if you, you're not, no one's going to get anything right the first time. Like, and if you do, you're very lucky. You learn more from the things that don't go well. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that, in, in that respect, in terms of TV, um, per, I didn't take it personally, but I feel like the industry kind of went, all right, well, they had their shot, like doing like a, a mainstream show. It didn't quite work out. So, they're dead food now, like that kind of thing. And the mad thing was, Ross, I, maybe about three years ago, off the back of doing Bang on the Money, I was like, right, okay. That was a great experience. I loved it. It didn't quite work out in terms of like, you know, ratings or whatever. Didn't come back. And then I wrote like, just like a, an idea, put an idea together for a show for me and Melbourne. It was off the back of the rated awards. Yeah. And I was like, right, I want to try and, Put something together because every time you go to one of these meetings they're like have you guys got any ideas if you've got any ideas let us know and we, we can try and work something out so i put this idea together and it was just called the ricky and melvin show and i based it my reference points were the richard blackwood show that we used to watch back in the day mm. wiling out uh with um nick cannon um uh what was the other one that i there were loads of loads of different shows that i just kind of like had influenced our generation over the years. And I just tried to kind of like condense it. Uh, but the main thing was, it was us showcasing ourselves, but at the same time, 
bigging up comedians, bigging up artists, bigging up, and just giving them the platform to bounce on into the mainstream, right? Mm. And I kid you not, like I had this idea, I sat on it for about six months, and I told Melvin, and as I told Melvin, what came up? Mo Channel Gilligan. Mo Gilligan. A big nasty. Big nasty show, which is basically a similar type of show. Similar type of show. And the mad thing was, when we went on to that show as guests, yeah, yeah. Mo, Gilligan, Mo Gilligan was like, so Ricky Melvin, how does it feel doing the show that you should be doing, being on the show that you should be doing? Hey, <laughs> Mo's a blood clot. <laughs> Bro, I, it, it cut me deep, but it was funny. And I love Mo, I love him. Uh, I he's love hilarious, him. he's hilarious. You know what's funny is, you know, and obviously I'm, I'm biased in it. I'm like, I'm a friend. But when I hear you talk in the sense of, you know, we did bang on the money and, and it didn't work out. And, and I'm just looking at you guys just like, fucking do it yourselves. Yeah. Like, I'm just, because, you know, I've, it's funny because it's come up in almost every conversation that I've, I've had doing this, where I'm just like, we grew up without the internet. So we're, I see us as a special generation in the sense that we are pre-internet, and post internet. Yeah. And so I think that no other generation really understands the power and of, of, of what the internet can do if you do it right. And, yeah. and so, yeah, I'm just always an advocate for just like, instead of waiting for- No, you're right. To, to, to green light you and say, because equipment is not even an issue anymore. You know, there's spaces to do these things and it's just like, just do it. You're 100% right, and I, ha I, I have this thought daily. Like, I'm just like, there's nothing stopping me from just doing it myself, like nothing. Like, but then what the, is? The things that, that go around in my head, is, it, if I'm being honest, is time, time. Yeah. Yeah. I know you can never have time if you don't make time, but that's the excuse that I always give myself. That's the excuse. I hear that. It is only an excuse because if I wanted to, the same way that when we were hungry and when we were coming up, we'd be up to all hours of the night rehearsing a script mm -hmm. to do a to do a show reel, bro. Yeah, like yeah. We'd go to like we'd be at one extra because we used to work there. We'd stay until two, three in the morning, like recording stuff for a demo, like for a yeah. demo. That do you know what I mean? It's that. It's, no, you're right. It's that hunger. I remember sitting in Melvin's mum's dining room, like until three, four in the morning and then driving home because we were filming our showreel the following day, Fix Up Look Sharp. And I was there till like four in the morning. I went home, I slept till about seven, got up, went to East London and we filmed the whole day. Do you know what I mean? Just like, so really and truly, if you want something enough, you can do it. Like there's, there, there's the same amount of hours in the day for everyone. Yeah. Same amount of hours in the day for everyone. So yeah, it's just, um, it's, yeah. One of the other things that I was going to ask was, so I was having, I was speaking to, do you remember Fallacy, the rapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was speaking to Danny um, the other day and his, his daughter's an, an adult now. And so he's gone through that thing of, you know, being a, a, a creative and raising a child. And I was saying one of the things that... Parties, right? That again? To come to our parties and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, one of the things that I, I, especially this lockdown, I went through a mad guilt where, so we would be in like the studio at, at the back of the garden, the boys would be in the house and it weren't so bad because you could leave the door open, you could leave the house door open, they'd be on the kitchen table doing their work and what have you. But I was very aware that I'm not, we're not spending time together where everybody's in the house, everybody's got their own thing to do. And then I, and then guilt would take over. And so whatever I was doing, I would stop and then I would go and I wouldn't even necessarily do anything with them, but it's just so that dad was there. And I think I've now got to a space where I'm like, I'm, I'm all right with just leaving them, you know, because I ain't sitting here picking my bum. Like I'm, I'm doing stuff and it's, it's all for a, for a greater good. How have you like found that balancing everything that you do with Lola and the, the rest of the wider family as well over the years? It's mad that you brought that up because I've obviously been in a situation where I'm, I've basically been a single dad for like the, the, the duration 
of, of, of like Lola's life. So I've learned how to navigate that as a single person. So I've learned, you know, through trial and error, right, I could do that. I've got enough time to do that. I've got my routine down to a T, but it means that I, like, for example, if someone says, if, if our agent, if mine and Melvin's agent says, right, we've got a meeting, um, they can only do between one and four. I'm like, well, I can't, I can't go because I've got, I've got to pick up Lily from school. So if I'm in central London, I'm not gonna be able to make it back in time mm. to, and I know that, you know, I know that like people will always want to accommodate, but it's going to grind on them eventually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're always kind of like putting that, but to me, I'm like, no matter what happens, that is my priority. That is my, that, that's non-negotiable. Like, I don't care. I don't care what it is. I need to make sure that I am not late. I'm standing there when she walks out of her school, that she, I'm the first thing she sees at the gate. That's my, that's what I need to do. And if I don't do that, if I'm a couple of minutes late, bro, I feel bad. I feel devastated. I feel, have you ever seen that when your kids are getting like taken away to, to after school club? Bro, it's like, it hurts, you know, because you feel like a rubbish parent. It's like they get in jail. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, they were going to put me in after school club. It's like they were going to go down for life. <laughs> I feel bad. So I can't, let my, I can't let my daughter have that. But it's mad because obviously meeting that, she's now saying to me, look, you don't, I, you've got me. Like, you don't have to kill yourself to, she's like, use me so that you can do that. Yeah. I can have Lola, she can be here, she can do her homework here. I can pick her up, da 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 da, da. And I'm like, it's, it's, I'm still in that zone where I'm like, not resisting, but I'm, I'm, I'm like baby steps to relinquishing <laughs> that responsibility because I've been so used to doing it and I feel like, it's my responsibility. So, but you know, like God is good, man, because obviously, you know, she's a godsend. So she's she's yeah. she's here to help. She's she's well up for it. Like so, Brilliant. yeah, we'll we'll see. I've got I've got three last questions for you. All right, yeah. what's been your defining moment so far? Good question. I, it's got to be my daughter. It has to be. It has to be. If I, if I had to look at my life retrospectively, it, that's, that's the thing that, is, that, I, that I'm the most proud of, obviously. Um, you will understand that as well. Yeah. I'm for it twice as well. Um, so that, if we're talking about career-wise, um, it's tough. Most proud of, in fairness, just the getting the job on Kiss because uh, like, I don't know if I've told you this, but like, literally just before we got signed to Kiss, I was thinking of just like, we've, you you know, we we've, we've been trying to do our thing, we've been you know putting up videos and like we've been doing all of this stuff, and we created Mental Excel to kind of help all of us in our individual careers to springboard us into what we wanted to do. So after that was happening and it felt like we were getting closer and Melvin was doing like CBBC and, you know, I'd done a, a few bits here and there, but nothing really was like popping. And then I thought to myself, do you know what? I just, I'm bored of being broke, man. I, I'm just, I'm just going to get a job in like a bank or something or like become an estate. I'm just bored of being like brass, <laughs> like Brock pocket. And literally as I was having these thoughts and there were serious thoughts and I was just going to go, I'm going to leave one extra in production and I'm just going to go and get a job that's going to make me dough. Like as I'm going to try and figure out what's going to make me the most amount of money for what the, any kind of skill that I can have legally. <laughs> 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 and that's where my head was at. And at that moment was when our agent came and said, um, that show reel that you and Melvin did got picked up by your bot, by the boss at kiss. He wants to have a meeting with you guys. And, we went and we, it was mad because we went and met him three times, three different occasions. First time we went down, we had a chat and he was like, oh, we're just going to get you in the studio, just see how you guys are on it, like, like your interaction and stuff. So we went in, we did one. He was like, cool. We went away, didn't hear nothing for a sec. Then they were like, ah, oh, they want you to come back to do another one. So we were like, okay, cool. So we went back, did another one. 
went away, didn't hear nothing again, right? <laughs> and then we got asked to go back a third time, right? So we've gone back a third time and me and Melbourne are now sitting, bearing in mind we're, we're working at one extra at the time and having to leave in our lunch break to go to Kiss, to go to Kiss, you know, in our lunch break. <laughs> About with the pilot. The hustle is real, bro. The hustle is real. And we're sitting in the reception of Kiss, the old Kiss building on Oxford Street. And we both looked at each other and we both knew what we were both thinking. And we looked at each other and we just went, if we don't nail this this time, this ain't gonna happen. Like this is the last, yeah. they, they can see that there's something there in terms of like our talent and our potential, but they obviously haven't seen enough to go, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna sign you guys. And we looked at each other and I was like, this is it. And he was like, if we don't do it this time, we ain't getting no job. <laughs> 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 and we went in there and a fair play to our boss man Andy Roberts I've got to big him up mm. because if it wasn't for him so much stuff would just not have happened he's the one that got the ball rolling mm. and you know he gave us our opportunity on KISS and we took it with both hands and the rest as they say is history so I think our time at KISS is the thing that I'm most proud of in terms of like my professional career because for me not so much Melbourne, but for me, that was what helped springboard me into everything else. Other than my relationship with Melvin, yeah. being at Kiss was the thing that got me my job at MTV. Yeah. My job at MTV got me my job on BBC3 doing documentaries. Like, do you know what I mean? And then that longevity, being at MTV, got Melvin in at MTV as well. Like, it just snowballed. It just yeah. snowballed after that. So, you think you'll that, do more, more documentaries? Do you know what? I... I would love to do more documentaries. The reason why I stopped doing the documentaries, firstly, the reason I did them in the first place was because um, I saw a documentary by Nahal. Mm -hmm. like, love Nahal, man. Bad man, like love him to the bone. And I remember seeing him and then my agent Grant came to me and said, oh, there's, an, uh, there's something come up with BBC Three, they want to do, do a documentary. And I, my first thing was Nahal. He did it, he was on radio, he does radio, he did documentary. And I was like, he, I look at him and just go, he's got a broad range of, yeah. of avenues. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I don't just want to be known as that dude on the radio or that dude that pops up at every two minutes on MTV for 30 seconds or whatever. I was like, this could be another string to my bow. Yeah. And I did them, I did two back to back. And then there was a lot of people at the time who I shouldn't have listened to that were saying, don't get stuck doing documentaries because you're going to end up being known as crime boy. Like right? you don't want to be known as crime boy because the people that were telling me this were trying to, uh, they were like going, you and Melbourne should just be, you should be doing entertainment. You should be doing like big shiny show. And I remember thinking, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we should be doing that. But I like doing that, but all right, cool. You don't know what you're doing. So I kind of like shied away from it a little bit. And then when I shied away from it, it exploded with um, uh, Reggie, but before Reggie, Stacy, Stacy, yeah, because yeah. um, when I was doing it, it was around the time when Cherry Healy was doing it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was her, and then it was me, mm. and then I stopped doing them, and then uh, Stacy then started doing them, and I remember thinking, rah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have stopped. And then Reggie started doing them, and Reggie started doing them well like really well yeah. and it was mad because the people that told me not to go down that route were people that Reggie knew as well like and I was thinking I wonder if they would have said the same thing to Reggie that they probably did yeah and he probably went whatever this is this is a great, a Reggie, great look. Reggie strikes me as the type of individual that's going to do what Reggie wants to do like what anybody says or thinks is yeah and yeah. he's been in the game a long time so he's yeah. very Reggie. very there's someone that I admire a lot. Yeah, Reggie's a G. Yeah, and obviously yeah. the, the Garner thing, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, what's been the best advice you've been given? Best advice? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that laugh. The be Do you know what? The best advice that I've been given, or the, the advice that always sticks in my mind, when I was about, I think I was about, I must have been 18. I was just about to go away to university to unknowingly meet you guys. Mm. Um, and my brother's godmother, who was like my godmother, she wasn't my godmother, 
but she was like my godmother, my auntie Shirley. And she was, she's, she's an academic, she's a lawyer. So she's very like, very academic. So all through like my school year, she'd always like take a, a good interest in like my SATs and how I revise and, you know, subjects that I'm taking, my options and blah, 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 blah. And when I was going to uni, she was like, I'm so excited for you. She was like, university is going to be a great experience. She was like, you don't need me to tell you you need to work. But she was like, party when everybody parties, but work when you need to work. And I remember, it, it just stuck with me, just stuck with me. So she's basically saying- did that. You did do that. Oh, she basically <laughs> said, go and have a good time. Yeah. Go and have, get your stuff done, yeah. but have a good time. And that's the way that I've tried to live. Like I've, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about, what's the point if it's not fun? Yeah. Like if it's, whatever it is, if I'm not enjoying it- What's the point? Yeah. Like why do it? So yeah, it has to be, for me, First and foremost, it has to be fun. It has to be fun. I appreciate that. Lastly, what advice would you give to yourself at 16? Ricky at 16. When Ricky was wearing jumpers tucked into his jeans. What would you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you don't try this man for that. Like, that was the style. That was the drum and bass I mean, style. It was never the style, man. It was never the style. Whoever told you that was gassing you up. Jan, I remember them shirts. <laughs> You did. You used to have this black shirt that had like a kind of like silver shimmer to it. And I remember thinking, oh, that shirt is hard. And when I look back at the photos, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you had the, do you remember that shirt? Do you remember? The shirt I remember the shirt. I remember the shirt. Do you remember the other dragon shirts as well that I had? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got them pictures as well. We did a full on photo shoot in your in your flipping bedroom, bro. You, me, Damien, Melvin, and Kerry. Why is why is my cousin Kerry there? She ain't even got a shirt on. <laughs> photo shoot. Yeah, Kerry, yeah, to be fair, at times Kerry was like the seventh seventh yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Ke- if, if it wasn't Kerry, I wouldn't have made it for university. Yeah. No, no yeah. way. Shout no out way. to Kerry, man. Yeah. Kerry, Kerry like did so much. And sometimes I like not forgotten, but I don't big her up enough mm-hmm. because it wasn't for Kerry. Like she helped me with my UCAS form. Do you know what I mean? She helped me like sort out my student bank account. She used to like, she was just, if, she, if it wasn't for Kerry, I would not have gone to university. Did she get you into One Extra as well? Yes, yeah. yes. So she got to One Extra before any of us. And then she was like, don't worry, I'm going to get you in. Don't worry, don't worry. And she was like, um, She'd been there six months and she was like, oh, they've got a Christmas party. Come to the Christmas party. I'll introduce you to all the people, all the, all the, all the top bods. And she did. And that's how I got my first gig at One Extra. But what advice would I give myself, my 16-year-old self? I would say, it's mad. There was, a, I'm going to digress just quickly. That yeah. we, we were walking back from uni one day when we lived at Downs Road. You, me. Leroy, Melvin, I think maybe Damien as well. And we were all walking back and I think it was you. It was our third year, final year. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it was you that said, what do you lot reckon you're gonna be doing in five years time? And to me, that question was scary. (laughs) That was a scary question because I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a presenter. I knew I wanted to get into the entertainment industry, the media but I just couldn't see how it could possibly, how I could possibly navigate there. So when you said that, I was afraid, like proper afraid, but it made me go, well, you need to think about this, bro. You can, it's not just gonna fall into your lap. You need to actually think about five years down the line. And that stuck with me with things like contracts. Like when we get, our contract was like, we signed the new contracts at Kiss or whatever, and I'd be like, right, okay. When when we sort out the next contract, like how like how is it going to work? Like I'd always be thinking two steps ahead rather than going. Let's get to this one and then decide. I was like, no 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 no. Let's sort out this one and that one so that we know that we're good for whatever because of what you said. Like always be thinking like down the line. Um, but yeah, what I would t- what I would tell myself, my sixteen year old self, is it's boring, but just trust the timing. Trust the timing mm. because. 
and you hear it with so I, I hear people say this so much like oh I was going to give up or I, I nearly didn't do this or you know there's like a moment where you know it, it all felt like it was for nothing but trust the time and if you're putting the work in it will happen it will happen because I remember thinking the amount of the amount of hours that me and Melvin and you and Nana and everyone all helping each other like dragging flipping Create music speaker boxes and like mashing up my trainers and, <laughs> like, <laughs> and going to meetings on a Sunday at the Froud Center or like oh, all of this, gosh. all of this stuff that we were doing, and it was for a reason. And I'm thinking, like, it, God will see all of the work that you put in, then it. And he, if he sees that you're serious, you'll get your chance, and you've got to take your chance when you get it. So I would say just. Trust the timing, trust the timing. Don't, don't fall to keep your head down and trust the timing. Amen to that. I can't argue with that, man. I can't yeah. argue with that. Ricky, it has been a pleasure. Yes, my bro. It's funny. I, I feel like for people watching this back, they may just be like, these are just two old men just catching up. And no, apology, no apologies. It may be that. It may be that. Because, yeah, I've, it's, it, it was that and it was needed for me anyway. So, uh, That's dope. Yeah. Same, same. It was beautiful. Same, but we will, hopefully will catch up physically at some point soon. Yes, we have to. We have to. Because isn't lockdown over now? It's just today. Today is, is, is over. It's over. Yeah. So, yeah. so hopefully, hopefully yeah. over Christmas maybe. Yeah. In fact, not over Christmas. It's only three households, isn't it? Oh, mate. Bro, I can't keep up. I can't keep up. It, it really is. I mean, that said as well, I feel like the whole country is going to go fuck you to these rules and everybody's just going to kind of do their own thing. But I mean, for me, it doesn't really matter. I've never really been like a big Christmas person anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, well, whatever, whatever we got, whatever the rules are, it's cool. But I, I know some people are going to be going to be frustrated. But I, at this point in time, I feel like you've just got to do what makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. What I think what will happen is no one's going to obey the rules and we're just going to have to go into another lockdown, <laughs> another lockdown in March. See you in March, mate. <laughs> Be back on the Zoom, bro. Back on the Zoom. But yeah, it is what it is. Bro? Yes, my brother. Listen, thank you so much. Give my love to everybody. No, I will, man. Same. Likewise. Say hello to the boys. Say hello to Nana. I will do, man. We'll catch up soon, yeah? Yes, bro. Big up. Yes.